Hey guys, my name is Christian Shaw. I'm the founder of Uncharted Supply Company in Park City, Utah. I'm here today at Austin at the Huckberry offices to talk to you about my EDC for mountain biking. So I live in Park City, Utah, and Park City is the number one rated mountain biking city in the world. There are bikes and trails everywhere. So if you're not seeing me out trail running, I'm probably on my mountain bike. It's one of my favorite activities. There are some things you need to think about to do it safely, efficiently, effectively, and have the most fun possible. So first up is kind of a, call it a base layer, but you're gonna want a chamois. And what that is, is that's a butt pack, basically. I've got two different ones that I carry. The difference here, this is basically like biker shorts with just a small chamois pad in it. I'm gonna be more aggressive. I wear the 661. It's got padding on the hips, thighs, uh, the chamois, and then a tailbone pad and some other stuff as well. Crash a lot, it's just part of the game. And if you're gonna be going hard and know that that might be a possibility, having a little bit of protection is really a nice thing to have. Now, as far as shorts go, uh, any shorts really work. You wanna have some flexibility, you wanna have some stretch. These Huller Brothers shorts are great. They've got a pretty durable material to them, uh, the right length kind of water repellent. And the big thing for me is really having a smooth surface back here where you're gonna be sitting on the bike. But for me, the same shorts I wear uh, out to the park or doing whatever are the same ones I wear mountain biking. Okay, next up for up top, I'm a big lightweight hoodie guy. And this proof one is just perfect. The reason I like hoodies, one, if you're on a bike ride, it's probably a couple hours, you're gonna have a lot of sunlight on your neck. This can kind of protect you from getting sunburned on your arms and your neck. It definitely helps repel bugs by not having exposed skin. And if you crash, there's another barrier here. Gloves are personal preference. This is also a glove from 661. I like a full finger glove. I like one that has the touch sensor for your phone, so you don't have to take your glove off every time. And I like no pads on the hands. Uh, these have actually kind of some hard spots over the knuckles, which is a place when you're falling that hits a lot of times. So a little extra protection there. Uh, one feature I like about these gloves is they've also got this really soft material on the thumb, which is basically for wiping off your sunglasses or your nose or something like that. The head is the most important piece you need to protect. You should never get on your bike without a helmet because anything can happen. Bike helmets were designed to basically stop your brain from a fall of about six feet. So the one thing I do recommend is that your helmet has MIPS and there's always gonna be a sticker on them if it does have MIPS. MIPS is a technology that was developed to reduce concussions and the way it works, it will always have this yellow inside that's kind of the identifier with MIPS, but it basically twists the internals from the externals when there's an impact, dissipating the energy caused by the crash or the fall. Okay, next piece is, this is a Bontrager, which is owned by Trek, little seat bag that I keep up under the seat of my bike. And what I keep in here is essentially the repair kit. You've got a couple tire irons, which you need for changing tires. You've got uh, a couple CO2 cartridges, and then you need your little adapter that screws onto these guys that actually pops this open and then gives you the CO2 to fill your tire. Uh, I also keep a tiny little multi-tool with me. This one is very bike specific to my bike. I don't want to carry a big heavy multi-tool. This gives me all the bits I need to make the changes I need. Now, you might be going, well, where's the tire? Well, mountain bike tires, most of them are tubeless, right? So they seal to the rim. If you pop one of those, you can put a tube inside and get home. This is the Park Pack. This thing's fully kitted out right now. Pretty pumped on this thing, but I'll tell you why. I wanted to build a hip pack that actually worked the way we all want them to work. And that means it carries water well. It doesn't flop around. It's waterproof. It's super durable. On the back, you've got a contoured back. You've got this really nice EVA foam. You've got seatbelt material on the hip straps themselves. So when you swing this around, it doesn't grab your shirt. It's going to get into your pack and dig around. You're not going to be pulling your jersey back or anything else. I like a water bottle. I'm always going to see how much water I have left. It helps me gauge it that way. And then putting the water on the sides actually reduces the flop of having all the weight back here and it distributes things more evenly. And people think these things are gonna fall out, they're not gonna fall out. We designed this, these water bottles absolutely will stay in no matter what. So you can head over to the park and backflip and hit berms and your water's gonna stay there. So I pulled this shell off. Now it goes without saying that it depends on weather, right? But where I live in the mountains, things can change instantly. So I use this little layer from Outdoor Research. It's waterproof, it's super packable, it's ultra lightweight, and really the most important thing is to stay dry. 
If you can stay dry, you can stay warm. This being waterproof and windproof, it checks those boxes. Okay, diving into the pack, a few more things that I bring with. I've got a headlamp. You never know when you're injured, maybe your bike breaks, now you're walking out seven or eight miles instead of riding a bike and your time quadruples or even more. Having a headlamp is really critical, I think, and something you should just always have with you. The other nice feature I like about this headlamp is it's USB chargeable. So every night you can plug that in, make sure you're topped off. And I think the battery is like 10 or 12 hours. So it gives you plenty of time to get through a night. If there's one thing that I can never have enough of, especially if my dog's with me, is water. This is the Sawyer Mini water filter. This is what's included in all of the Uncharted survival kits. And it is an amazing little tool. So the way this works, it comes with this bladder. You fill this up with water. You simply screw this top on and then you squeeze the water in and it's safe to drink immediately. It's really simple, it's very efficient. There's 100,000 gallons of water in its lifetime and I've tested it all over the world. On top of the water, I like to bring with some extra hydration. Protec is a company that my buddies run. They're all former military and they make a really nice natural supplement for hydration and for energy. This one's energy, these are hydration. A few things I like about this, it's liquid, so you can actually just shoot it if you want. You can mix it with your water if you want but it's designed for maximum absorption. So you're not peeing everything away because you're just pounding a ton of water. Next up, a uh, Clean Freak body wipe. I always keep a couple of these with. You never know when you're gonna crash and have something you need to clean out with the antibacterial properties of this, or your stomach might get upset and you just gotta use the restroom. But this is a lot nicer to have with than having to rip a sleeve off your shirt or leave your underwear behind. So bring a couple of these and don't be that guy. Up next, there's a lighter in here. I don't smoke. As I said earlier, with the jacket, with some other things, you never know when you're gonna be broken off a long ways from home. You might be spending your night out there. Being able to start a little fire goes a long ways to staying warm, maybe signaling help, whatnot. Inside the park pack is a pocket designed for this first aid kit. This might be the most important part to me. And again, this is a product my company makes. It's called the triage kit. So there's a bunch of stuff in here designed to not only fix you, but fix your gear. So maybe a screw came out on your bike seat or something's loose on your handlebars. You should be able to fix it with what's in here. There's duct tape, zip ties. So I always carry this with me. I think it's a really critical piece to have with you no matter what you're doing. And I highly recommend it. And last but not least, depending on what you're doing, I've got this little Garmin InReach Mini. So if you're out of cell service, this will talk to satellites and get text messages out. In addition to having an SOS button where you can pay for service, you press that button and people are going to come and get you no matter where you are in the world. I just can't recommend having one of these with enough. So I fully realize that mountain biking can probably appear a little intimidating if you've never done it before, but what you're probably seeing on TV is the most extreme examples of a sport. Just like anything, there's a beginning and then there's the upper echelon. I recommend this, go down to your local bike shop, ride some different bikes, figure out what the right size is for you. Being on too big of a bike or too small of a bike is, is as dangerous as it is uncomfortable. The biggest differentiator between cyclists is really fitness and strength. And that's something you can build no matter what bike you're on. So get out there, have fun with it, start somewhere and just get into it. You're gonna learn a lot really fast. Well, that's it guys. This is what I take when I'm out mountain biking in the hills of Park City, where I live and where we work at Uncharted Supply Co. every day. Come check us out online, pick up our products here at Huckberry. And as we like to say back in Park City, don't die.